Hey guys, I've got another Creature Caster review for you today. Uh, this time we're taking a look at the King of War. Uh, I'm going to do something similar to what I did with the King of Ruin, where uh, I'm going to uh, show you how the parts all go together. Um, and then uh, once I'm done building it, I'm going to uh, show you what I did, you know, where, where I maybe ran into trouble or uh, where I had to fill gaps. Um, and what maybe you want to watch out for yourself if you're going to build this thing. Uh, the short version of the review is probably the prettiest miniature I've ever worked on in my life, but not without issues. It's fairly complex. I had to do a fair bit more gap filling uh, than I did on the King of Ruin. So if you've never built a resin kit before or uh, you're not a real big fan of filling a lot of gaps. Uh, yeah, you might want to, you might want to get the King of Ruin first because, uh, you wouldn't think so from looking at it, but that's actually a far easier kit to work with than this one. Still though, great kit. Let's take a look. Uh, before we do that though, um, I'm just going to tell you right at the top what my biggest gripe with this kit is, and it's not something to do with the kit itself, but packaging. Uh, if you look closely here, you can see from the discoloration that this is broken. And what's actually happened is that four pieces of like rubble and, uh, and this little skull here have broken off both of these base pieces here. And uh, it's not a deal breaker or anything. And Creature Caster actually does have a parts replacement service. So if it really bothered me, I could get that replaced. But uh, I just, I don't feel like waiting for another package from Canada, to be honest. Um, and, uh, you know, if you look at this, I mean, if you don't know that there's a, supposed to be a little arch here made up of two little pieces of rubble and a skull in the middle, no one's going to notice that this is missing. But, uh, it's just, you know, it just goes with what I was complaining about with the packaging last time. Um, it's just kind of a shame because, you know, I, I don't think this would be too difficult to avoid, to be honest. Anyway, um, these things here go on the base. And as you can see, they, they fit together damn near perfectly. I mean, this gap here is, you're not even going to see that. So, yeah, that, that goes on here. Um, and then this slit that you can see here is where this axe goes um, which of course I mean doesn't even doesn't really matter if there's a gap or not if anything the gap makes it look more realistic um, then to attach the uh, to attach the model to the base what you need is what you need is its feet uh, and I'm a little worried to be honest about just you know how how fragile that's uh, going to be once it's actually put together. This fits in here. Now, as you can see, the parts fit here is pretty nice. That gap is there, but I mean, it's rubble, so there's supposed to be gaps. Uh, back here, it also fits pretty well. Uh, this took some doing, though, to get this to fit. I had to cut off quite a bit here, and uh, I think now, now it should fit, and more importantly, it should actually make contact here. Um, because this is basically what's going to hold up the entire model, which I'm a little concerned about. And I'm probably going to, you know, now that I look at this again, I'm probably going to drill a pin through here. Um, the other leg, mm, let me show you like this. This is the lower torso. This is, I keep getting this backwards. This is his left leg. Now, as you can see here, you do end up with a bit of a gap here. And I, this is probably the one thing where I think the part separation could have been done better. This also didn't immediately fit, by the way. This, this thing here in the middle took quite some, quite some cutting and hacking. Uh, it's actually too big. It gets in the way. Once you take care of that, though, you can see that the parts fit here is pretty good. Um, but yeah, it's just, I don't know, I, it, in my opinion, they could have thought of something to not have there be uh, the seam line, you know, just basically going across the knee. What you do is, this is really hard to do if it's not glued together. Um, this the, what, see, what happens is that this, see, it connects uh, here into the base and up here 
um, is where the knee connects. Uh, this also, I think I also had to do some cutting here now. It's basically a perfect fit. Also, this knee um, fits more or less perfectly. And this is just out of the box. I haven't done anything to this. Um, so yeah, that's the legs. Another thing I want to show you here, <laughs> check out the, check out the chainmail, man. <laughs> the chainmail is made of skulls. <laughs> this, is, this is seriously the greatest thing I have ever seen. Chainmail made of skull. <laughs> ah, this is so corn, man. Anyway, um, what else can I show you here? Uh, there are these two armor plates here. Uh, that totally don't have a chaos symbol on them. Uh, that just pop on here. As you can see, perfect fit here. And I'm just realizing, yeah, there's a bit of a step here, but I think I'm just gonna, yeah, I think I'm just gonna leave that. It could actually be the trim. Um, same thing on the other side. Pop, you see here, no gap, perfect fit. Unbelievable. Uh, on the back, uh, we've got this, also more or less perfect, um, and also these two chain things here um, attached to his belt here, boom, perfect, didn't do anything to this, here, boom, also perfect, uh, also completely unmodified, um, and then uh, the torso goes on top here. Um, there's a tiny little bit of a gap here under his pec, but I'm probably just going to leave that, um, back here as well. This is, I mean, the, the wings are going to be here and everything. I don't know this, I might close up, but, uh, generally, I mean, you can see here they're, they're doing that thing where basically the belt, uh, or whatever this, yeah, it is a belt, uh, or strap or, you know, that these armor pieces are attached to with these straps here. This is the seam line. So, you know, even if there is a tiny gap, there's really no need to do anything to it. Now, let's take a look at everything that attaches to the upper torso. Um, first of all, uh, another thing, the last thing I think where I have a bit of a parts fit issue, this is the neck. Now here you have a strap going across the back. Um, and the hair goes on like, it's one of the things I can never figure out. The hair goes on like this, but you see here, there is a bit of a gap here. And I don't know how easy it's down here as well, by the way. And this is going to be really, really difficult to get to, to, uh, to fill up. So I may just leave it and hope that the shadow just sort of masks it. Don't know yet. This is the one, probably the one gap on this kit that bugs me because it's going to be difficult to take care of. I mean, the thing on the knee is like, whatever, you know, slap some Millie put on there and you're golden. Now the faces, you get two again, like on the gold, uh, Lord of Ruin, <laughs> the gold of Ruin, right? Now with these two, uh, I have to say, um, this is not really much of a debate for me, which one I'm going to use. And it's going to be the one with the face plate. Just first of all, look at all this awesome detail. Secondly, the horns are longer. This, it's a really nicely molded face. It looks extremely expressive, but honestly, to me, it's like with the other one for the for the Lord of Ruin. It just looks too human, you know. It just, like, I'm sorry, but it looks like an angry middle aged guy who's I don't know, shouting at someone in traffic or whatever it I don't know I just like my demons to look a bit more demonic I guess okay uh what's next we've got the also by the way oh yeah I've got to show you this look this is of course the armor for the faceplate which basically wraps around this gap here the ear is on the other side and so this looks just boom perfect you know couldn't be better uh the other face doesn't have that but it also fits perfectly and I mean perfectly. Look at this. Look at this. This is unbelievable. Garage resin kit, folks. Amazing. Um, yeah, and the horns. I'm actually not, I'm not sure what the problem with the horns is. I can't quite get them to fit. Probably going to have to do some work on them. 
mean, they go on. First of all, <laughs> I don't know which is which. Um, but uh, either way, okay, this one fits here. Watch me figure this out on camera. So this has to be his right horn then. Um, and that, see, that doesn't quite fit here. Uh, I'm going to have to do some more hacking. I mean, it's not, you know, it's not a big deal, but uh, I'm going to have to figure that out. Um, <clears throat> also, his dreadlocks um, close up nicely here in the front. See, you kind of have to wiggle them in place, but I'm just going to glue them so that this is closed. Um, and the rest is all going to be, I mean, first of all, there basically aren't any gaps. You can see a little bit of a gap here on this side, but uh, the horns are going to mask that, so whatever. Uh, okay, next, arms. Uh, this shoulder piece is one of my favorite, my favorite little seamer cover upper tricks. You see this here on the strap where it folds around this ring? This goes, come on, here. <laughs> it, you see that? <laughs> this is so fucking great. And yeah, when you glue this together, like there is no gap here. None. This is perfect. Also, look at the detail on the shoulder armor. First of all, skull, <laughs> skull chain mail again, skulls here, not chaos symbols here, trim everywhere. It's almost like this thing isn't even going to need any shading because <laughs> it's it's so detailed. Like, what are you going to do after after you've done the 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 the, the detail painting? What's there? What's left to do? You know. Uh, lower arm has uh, the armor covering up. Whoops, covering up the uh, seam here. See, <clears throat> perfect. Uh, this is where the hand for the axe goes, and this greave, of course, goes over the wrist. So, <clears throat> also perfect. Um, the uh, other arm attaches. This is another amazing piece of parts fit here. Let's see if I can figure this out the first time. Um, Every time, every time I have to, you see that? That's, see, this muscle goes on top and there's no gap. I just, it's just perfect, you know, just fits. Uh, maybe a tiny little bit here in the front. I might still fill this just because I'm a little worried that the wash is going to run into this and make a line, but... Um, and uh, for this arm, also this, of course, you know, grief covering up the seam, boom, done, perfect. Uh, the chain here also works really well. Uh, it's just one of those things that I have to rotate around 11 billion times every time until I can remember how you attach it. And this is what is, in fact, happening right now. Oh, yeah, it goes on the inside like that. Ah, uh, here we go. You see, you do have... <laughs> sorry about that. It goes on the inside like that. Uh, you do have a tiny bit of a gap here. Um, but, I mean, it's chain links, so whatever. Um, and here on the other side of his hand, if I can wiggle it in place. You... Ugh. Seriously, I've, you know, I've test fitted this stuff like 11 billion times right here. See, a little bit of a gap here, but it's a chain link, so why wouldn't there be a gap? Uh, fits. Um, also, uh, for the weapon, um, since I'm, I'm working with this anyway, you get two options, which are this, this hook, um, and, and this thing. Now, uh, which looks, I don't know, like he's about to drop an anchor. Uh, I did, this has really nice detail, but so does the, you see here, it's actually like, it's got this metal plate that looks like it's bolted to the inside and then bent around here. This has basically the same thing. It's, you know, he also has a hook, he also has a hook swinging off from this, from this chain here. So it's kind of a, but it, I just, I like this so much better than this. I'm going to go with the hook and use this on, you know, a conversion. Um, it's a nice weapon. I just, I just don't like it on this kit. 
Uh, oh yeah, and the axe, um, which by the way, uh, also totally doesn't have a chaos symbol on it, of course. Really, really nice detail though, and sharp, just awesome. Look at the haft here. Um, looks to be slightly bent, but it's not a problem. Uh, you get this to put on the back here. Make this look nice, fits perfectly, like almost everything else on this kit. Uh, and finally, the wings. Um, got the torso again. First of all, uh, if you don't want the big flappy wings, you can use these. Uh, you can use these, sorry. Um, and you can see here, uh, the parts fit is damn near perfect. You might want to, if you're super anal, you might want to fill this. Um, but it's going to take like 10 seconds. Uh, and on this side, and then, you know, you have these. Same here, you know, parts fit is nearly perfect. Um, on this side, you get this. Um, see, and then you have these like stumpy wings. Um, or you use the big flappy wings. Um, which, first of all, look at this armor here. There's a chain here that has skulls dangling from it, with more hooks, which is actually. Now that I think about it, it's a good reason to actually use the other, uh, the, use the hook because this is a detail that is repeated so many times all over the kit. Now, let me see if this is the correct, yeah, it is. You see, there's, uh, there is a bit of a gap here that I think I'm going to fix just because I kind of think the wings are going to be sort of a focal point uh, on the back also, like almost perfect, just not quite, um, and pretty much the same with the other wing going to be a tiny bit of gap filling i think uh, if i can figure out how this oh here we go <laughs> uh see here it's a bit of a gap and here on the front but i mean it's just really harmless you know it's like we're on a toothpick full of milli put in there and just rub over it with a wet finger a couple of times and you're golden um, is there anything else I wanted to show you? No, that's it. So uh, I'm going to put this guy together and then we're going to take a look. Wait, I knew I was forgetting something. <laughs> uh, this wound tracker here. Um, this, uh, I, I saw a review, I think it was on Spiky Bits, of uh, the Lord of Ruin that also had this. Now, my Lord of Ruin didn't come with this, uh, but the, um, the King of War, <laughs> Lord of Ruin, King of Ruin. Uh, the King of War did. Um, you can, you know, you can put a magnet in there and put, I don't know, a coin in here. And then you can use this as a wound tracker if you're gonna if you're gonna use the uh, if you're gonna use the King of War in games. Because on this side it goes to 20, on this side it goes from zero to nine, depending on what kind of game system you're using. And you get one with the uh, one with the exposed face. Uh, and one with the face mask. Um, it's ratcheted here. I mean, really, honestly, you, if I was, I don't know, if I was to use this, I'd probably magnetize it. But I mean, it's ratcheted and it, you know, it, you really have to tilt it sideways for it to even fall out. So you might as well just plunk this down on the table and go like that. So uh, yeah, that's pretty cool. Um, and I think now I've shown you everything. <laughs> I'm sorry guys, but uh, I've just spent the better part of an hour trying to get this guy upright without gluing things together that I don't want to glue together. And uh, number one, it ain't happening. And number two, uh, I've already broken two pieces of rubble off the base here just trying to get this guy to stand. So uh, yeah, uh, I'm done. This is, this is how it's going to be and uh, this is what I'm going to show you. So uh, first of all, <clears throat> The base, um, nothing really new to see here. Uh, I glued um, some pieces on here. This broke off and I had to glue it on differently um, because, uh, well, you, there's just basically no way to glue it back on the way it was originally attached. These are, I mean, you can see this is fragile, right? So if you're gonna build this guy yourself, be very careful with these uh, flying pieces of rubble. Now, the way it all goes together is, 
Let me see if I can show you this without breaking it again. Um, this um, has some poster tack on it from my 50,000 attempts to get it to stand up. This slots in here, like so. And then um, the axe goes here, you know, and his upper torso goes on top there and holds on to the axe. And uh, yeah, and you would think that maybe the axe would prop him up enough um, for that to work even without gluing the torso together, but it doesn't. Um, this is what he basically looks like all put together. Um, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna glue this together because, uh, this on the back here, uh, doesn't, I mean, it does bug me, but oh well. Um, and here on the front, uh, the, there's a tiny little gap here under his pec that I showed you before. And, you know, he's gonna, I mean, you're gonna be looking at him sort of like this, so it's basically invisible. And having these two pieces separate, it's just going to make it so much easier to paint. Um, you can see here, I actually, I did decide to fill, well, most of this gap here. Um, here, uh, I think that's it on the legs. Yeah. <clears throat> Sorry, I somehow seem to have accrued a sore throat over the course of today. I probably inhaled too much resin dust. Um, I filled the gap here on his arm. Um, also, uh, still some milliput left here that I'm going to have to get rid of before I prime him. Um, also, the one here around the collarbone. This was, as you can probably imagine, this was, this is by far the most difficult thing to fix. Uh, it looks pretty good now. Should be okay. I mean, you never know until you prime it, right? But uh, the uh, and then here along the hairline, this is also pretty difficult, and I'm not entirely happy with how that turned out, but we'll see. Uh, two more things about the upper torso and the head. Uh, first of all, um, when I was struggling to get the horns in place earlier, I noticed um, afterwards, I noticed that the the face with, um, I mean, the face that's just a face actually fits around the horns just fine. This one doesn't. And what I ended up having to do is you can see here on these horns, the small ones, which are attached to the face plate, there are these rivets, right? And basically what I had to do was just cut off one of the rivets to make way for this ring on the horn here. And then it was fine. Um, also, a little bit of advice. Don't glue on this arm. If you're going to do sub-assemblies like me, do not glue on this arm. I don't know why I did, really. There was no need. I could have gone the arm and the axe like that, you know, and just... Yeah, I painted that arm separately because, see, the problem I'm going to have now is there's all this skin here between his head and the shoulder plate and also the inside of the shoulder plate that's going to be a freaking nightmare to paint. Just a nightmare. And then I'm going to get right in there and I'm not going to know how to shade it. So, yeah, I'm not looking forward to that. That's going to suck. Um... Yeah, so that's what I did on the upper torso. Oh, also, yeah, another thing. By far, the most difficult thing to get to actually attach and stay on was this goddamn hook here. You see here, it, it's just a mess now of, of like milliput and super glue and... I had to cut, I had to sand, I had to trim. It's not really together the way it's supposed to be together, but uh, yeah, it seems to be attached now. I also broke it off one time trying to, get, uh, trying to you know, do a loose assembly um, for just seeing them upright. So um, that's one of the reasons why I gave up. Uh, and finally on the wings, uh, I also, I did decide after all to uh, fill in, to fill in this, this gap here um, wasn't too difficult. So, uh, yeah. So, uh, in conclusion, uh, did, I ended up doing quite a bit more gap filling on this one than on the King of Ruin. Uh, some of it because it was necessary and some of it because I just wanted to. I have to say though, 
I mean, looking at this guy, um, this is this is probably the prettiest miniature I've ever worked on. Let me see if I can just hold him. <laughs> so, like so. Yeah, that's about that's as close as we're gonna get to a finished assembly before I paint them, guys. This is probably the prettiest miniature I have ever worked on in my life. It's just so, so nice. The detail, the dynamic pose, uh, the, the just the, the sharpness, it's, 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 it's kind of annoying to hold because there's so many sharp edges that are actually cutting me when I'm holding this. Um, it's considerably more complex than the King of Ruin um, and therefore also has a few more issues. But um, it's totally worth it in the end. I mean, this thing is just so pretty. Um, yeah, so no comparison to the Bloodthirster. I'm sorry. I'd, I'd really, I'd have, to, I'd have to be able to actually get this guy upright to do that. So uh, we'll have to, uh, this will have to do for now. The next thing you're probably going to see from me is a couple more Zoids reviews. And I have actually started painting that King of Ruin, by the way, just so you know. So that should be done, I don't know, over the course of the next two weeks, I figure. Uh, anyway, that's it for this one. Uh, me fun make, you hopefully fun watch. You know how that line goes. Uh, like, comment, subscribe, check out the Patreon link in the description below, and I'll see you in the next one.